Hello friends, grab a cup of tea and let me tell you a story. Today's story is about afternoon tea and it has four chapters. First, I'm gonna talk about different types of tea. Second, I'm gonna talk about parts of afternoon tea. Third, I'll talk about my favorite bits. And fourth, I'll talk about my favorite places to have afternoon tea. Now, if you like this video, please remember to hit the like button because the YouTube algorithm needs to know that you like it. It's important. Now, when I say types of tea, I don't literally mean Earl Grey versus English breakfast versus herbal tea. What I mean is when a British person says they want tea, what kind of tea could that mean? For starters, it could be simply just a cup of tea, or it could be tea as in tea meaning dinner. This is something that I cover in my confusing British food words video. If you haven't seen it yet, I'll include a link in the description below so you can check it out. So what about this thing called high tea? Well, when Americans hear the term high tea, they imagine pinkies in the air, something very stuffy and high class, something that aristocratic women with large hats and bustles and whatnot would wear, like Downton Abbey. But actually, it's very far from that. The term high tea is a working class term referring to the dinner meal. So high tea originated as something that would be eaten right after the work day, so a little after 5 p.m. And it was a heavy meal that would have something like pie, a beef or pork or steak and kidney pie, vegetables, some type of bread, baked goods, things like that, heavy sustenance, stick to the ribs kind of food. Not at all the dainty types of foods that we associate with afternoon tea. In fact, it's believed that the term high tea comes from the fact that the meal was eaten either at higher chairs that you would find in a pub or high back chairs that you would find around a kitchen table in someone's home. But we're here today to talk about afternoon tea. And to do that, we need to start by talking about this lovely woman, the Duchess of Bedford, Anna Russell. She is who we have to thank for afternoon tea. She was a lifelong friend of Queen Victoria's, and in this time period, the mid-1800s, it was customary for people to eat a breakfast meal in the mid-morning, and then an evening meal quite late in the evening, perhaps as late as 9 p.m. The way the tale is told, our Duchess here found herself feeling a bit peckish mid-afternoon and didn't want to go so long without eating. So, afternoon tea was invented as a meal to eat in between the breakfast meal and that late dinner. The ironic thing is that this fancy afternoon tea is often eaten in chairs that are low to the ground, like living room or lounge chairs, and so it's also sometimes referred to as low tea. One last type of tea to talk about before we move on, and that is the cream tea. A cream tea is simply tea with scones, clotted cream, and jam, and it is in fact a subset of a full afternoon tea, which we will get to in the next section, parts of a full afternoon tea. Afternoon tea often, but not always, is served on a cool three-tiered serving tray like this. Let's break down all the parts of the full tea. First, of course, you have the tea. Now, it could be loose leaf, it could be bag tea, but it's pretty much always served in a lovely little teapot to keep the tea warm. If you want to hear all about making tea, you can check out my video about making a proper cup of tea. A link is in the description below. Next up, we have finger sandwiches. So they might be served on the tower or they might be served on a separate tray, but these lovely little crustless sandwiches come in a wide array of possible choices. And the best part is that you are usually given at least a few varieties to choose from. So there might be ham, roast beef, egg and cress, of course, cucumber sandwiches, smoked salmon, or even cheese and pickle. They are a wonderful first course, which I consider kind of the savory course in a full afternoon tea. After those savory sandwiches come the cream tea course. 
So let's talk about scones. Now, if you are British, I'd love for you to weigh in and tell us if you say scone or scone, because in Britain, it's pronounced both ways. So do you pronounce it scone as in rhymes with bone or scone as in rhymes with gone? Please comment below and let us know. Because I'm American, I say scone. Now these scones are hopefully served warm and always with the very essential clotted cream. I think clotted cream is the cornerstone of the full afternoon tea. When I get a tea here in the US, it never has clotted cream, so it's just not the same. So for those of you who don't know what clotted cream is, it is made by heating unpasteurized cream until it's very hot and then slowly cooling it until it clots. Now, since unpasteurized milk or cream is not really a big thing here in the States, it's pretty hard to find in this country. But enough about the technical side of things. Let's talk about why clotted cream is magical. Clotted cream is really kind of a hybrid. It's this wonderful substance that's very similar to butter, but also very similar to whipped cream. It's kind of in between the two. It always comes up that there's a difference between which order you put the clotted cream and the jam on your scones. And this really all comes down to a bit of a rivalry between the counties of Devon and Cornwall. In Cornwall, which is the very southwesternmost tip of England, in that county, it's traditional to put the jam on the scones first and then top that with clotted cream. Whereas in Devon, it's customary to first put the clotted cream on the scone and then put jam on top. Now here's my foodie analysis as to why both of these ways totally make sense. Like I said, clotted cream is kind of in between butter and whipped cream. Well, in the same way that you would use whipped cream in, say, strawberry shortcake, where you have the shortcake and then you put strawberries on it and then you put whipped cream on top, that would be kind of like the Cornish way of having a cream tea, where you have the fruity jam and then the cream on top. Alternatively, in Devon, it's more like the butter usage. In the same way that here in the States, we would have biscuits and then we would put butter on top and jam on top of that. That's the same idea of taking a scone and putting clotted cream on it in a layer and then top that with fruit jam. But let's be honest, it tastes the same either way and both are magically delicious. While scones can be sweet or savory, they usually are sweet and certainly if topped with clotted cream and jam, it's a very sweet concoction. Which is why it's a bit gilding the lily that after you've had your cream tea, the next and final course of the full afternoon tea are the cakes. And these cakes really can be any kind of dessert. As you can see here at this particular afternoon tea, there were cupcakes and an orange cake and a really rich chocolate cake with gold leaf on top and even Linzer Tort cookies. But really any type of desserts can be in this course. It could be petit four. Typically these cakes or desserts are small so that they are almost bite sized and you can have a few different varieties because that's the thing about a full afternoon tea, you're eating a lot of different yummy things, which honestly is what makes it so amazing. Now for a brief chapter on my favorite bits, the best things that I've had in a full afternoon tea. This was a memorable tea time we had in a rooftop restaurant. I only drink herbal tea, and in this particular restaurant, the herbal tea they had was mint tea, and it was a fresh mint tea made with fresh mint leaves and sugar, and it was amazing. My favorite finger sandwiches are ones that are served with a variety of breads. So there might be white bread, a nice granary bread, which is what they usually call whole wheat bread. And since meat sandwiches aren't my favorite, I love it when the tea offers really yummy sandwiches that are like a perfectly seasoned egg salad with cress or cream cheese and cucumber sandwiches or cheese and pickle, which 
if you've met me, you know my love of cheese, so I'm a pretty big fan of a nice fancy cheese and pickle sandwich. When it comes to scones, a good afternoon tea will serve you warm scones that offer both plain and fruit scones, but a great tea will offer both sweet and savory scones. So this amazing tea I had had both regular fruit scones offered with clotted cream and fruit jam, but it also had plain scones with an herby cheese spread, which was amazing. Nice way to balance out the fact that you're about to eat five different kinds of desserts in the next course. <laughs> Speaking of the cakes course, I'm going to tell you about the best cakes that I ever had at an afternoon tea. We were given an amazing assortment of little desserts that included passion fruit panna cotta, triple chocolate brownies, lemon mousse, Victoria sponge, and French macaron cookies. They were all so delicious, it was unforgettable. And finally, my favorite places to have afternoon tea. Generally speaking, my two favorite places to have afternoon tea are in a library and in a garden. So when I'm in London, my favorite place to have tea is in the library at the Marriott County Hall. Now this is a famous building that you know, even if you haven't been there, you've seen it because we've all seen a picture of the London Eye. And the Marriott County Hall is in the big county hall building. That's the white building behind the London Eye which also, by the way, is a fabulous hotel to stay in. But even if you're not staying at the hotel, take the opportunity to go have afternoon tea in the library. They've got wonderful bookshelves and these little nooks that the tables are in where your party can sit around the table with shelves of books behind you, and it's just the most lovely setting. And the tea is fantastic. And if you're super lucky, you can be seated at a table by the window that faces this lovely view of Big Ben. Of course, I'm glad I took this photo back in 2016 because Big Ben has been covered in scaffolding for the last couple years. When I'm in the country, my favorite place to have tea is in a garden at a lovely manor house. My favorite place being Buckland Manor in Gloucestershire. This is a beautiful house with beautiful grounds, and I've had tea there twice. The first time I had tea there, I had the amazing cakes that I told you about at the end of the last chapter. And I literally spent the next year falling asleep at night dreaming about having that afternoon tea again. It was so delicious. So a year later, I came back and had tea there again. And once again, it was just a wonderful experience. And once again, we had a fantastic time. So I highly recommend going to Buckland Manor. And if you're there in the summer and can enjoy sitting in the garden with the flowers all around you, it is just the most quintessentially perfect British full afternoon tea experience, in my humble opinion. I hope you have enjoyed hearing a little bit about my love of afternoon tea and now i want to hear from you if you've had afternoon tea in britain tell me about your favorite afternoon tea experience where was it what did you eat why was it great and if you haven't had afternoon tea yet tell me where you want to go tell me what you want to try i look forward to hearing from you thanks so much for watching on the end screen you'll see the magenta otter travels logo please click on it to subscribe if you haven't yet and be sure to click the bell button so that you will be alerted each time a new video in the series comes out. And most importantly, do something good in the world today.